हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी क्रॉस सेक्शनल एलिमेंट्स इन विच आवर फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज द पेवमेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक नाउ इन पेवमेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज फ्रिक्शन नाउ व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय फ्रिक्शन एनी फोर्स व्हिच अपोजेस द मूवमेंट ऑफ अ व्हीकल इज नोन एज फ्रिक्शन now suppose that if vehicle is moving like this along a particular pavement with a velocity v so to oppose this movement friction will be generated here that is known as frictional force and its magnitude is generally equals to f into n that is the coefficient of friction small f and n is the normal reaction which is acting here that will be the value of n and here the weight of the body that is mg will be acting now in friction the first type of friction is the longitudinal or rolling friction now what do you mean by longitudinal or rolling friction rolling friction acts in the direction opposite of movement of vehicle or longitudinal direction it means that the longitudinal or rolling friction is generally acting in the direction opposite to that of movement which is shown here that is the rolling friction or longitudinal friction the longitudinal or rolling friction supports movement of vehicle because for the movement of a particular vehicle it will require some types of opposing force that will help in the movement of the vehicle it is generated as the resistive force to the traction force here traction force is that force which is generally used for the movement of that vehicle and resistive force is that force which generally opposes the movement of vehicle so resistive force is frictional force here and traction force is the moving force which is generally acting in this direction now as per irc 73 1980 the value of coefficient of longitudinal friction ranges between 0.35 to 0.40 now this value is very important as per the all government competitive exams as well as from the gate point of view now we can move to the note that is coefficient of longitudinal friction depends upon the speed of vehicle now how coefficient of longitudinal friction depends upon speed of vehicle suppose that if the speed of vehicle is very high then the contact area between the tire and the pavement is very less so friction will be very less because the frictional force depends on the contact area between tire and the pavement and if the speed of vehicle is very large then the contact area will reduce to very small value so the frictional force also reduces but if the speed of vehicle is very slow then the contact area will be very high and if the contact area is large then the frictional force is also very large so i had written here as speed of vehicle increases the contact area between tires and surface decreases which i had already told you hence coefficient of friction decreases so the coefficient of longitudinal friction is inversely proportional to the speed of vehicle if speed of vehicle is very high then coefficient of longitudinal friction is very less and vice versa now smooth tires offers higher friction factor than the new tires on dry pavement you know that during the rainy season we all are going to change the tire of our vehicle why suppose that we have two cases first one is for dry season now when the season is dry as well as when the surface of the road is also dry then smooth tire generally offers higher friction factor why because the contact area between smooth tire and pavement is very large that's why the friction factor is also very large 
in dry pavement as compared to the new tire because new tires is generally having corrugations like this so only that corrugated part will be in contact with the pavement and other surfaces will not be in the contact with the pavement so friction factor will be very less but this condition is reversed in case of wet pavements because in wet pavements in between the surface of the tire and the pavement there will be water now due to the water present in between the surface of the tire and the pavement so the contact area will be very less and if the contact area will be very less then the friction factor will be very less but when we used new tires in case of wet pavements then these corrugations will comes in contact with the pavement and due to which friction factors increases that's why during dry pavement a smooth tire offers higher friction factor as compared to new tires whereas in case of wet pavement the condition is reversed and smooth tires offer lesser friction factor as compared to new tires in case of wet pavement because water acts as a lubricating agent in between the surface of the tire and the surface of the pavement now the next topic is the lateral friction now when lateral friction comes into picture suppose that there is a curve like this that is the horizontal curve and our vehicle is moving like this now when vehicle is moving along that curve there is a tendency of vehicle to move in the outward direction like this now to counteract this outward movement there will be a frictional force which comes into play which will balance this outward movement of the vehicle and that friction is known as lateral friction and the coefficient of friction along this lateral direction is known as f lateral and as per the irc 73 1980 its value is 0.15 so the value of longitudinal coefficient of friction is 0.35 to 0.40 and the value of coefficient of friction in lateral direction is equals to 0.15 as per irc 731980 now the next topic is skid and slip now what do you mean by skid when the rotational movement of a wheel that is shown in this diagram is like this is less than the translational movement of that wheel then it is known as skid now it generally takes place during braking operation when we applied the brake to the vehicle the rotational motion of wheel will stop but the translational movement of vehicle will go on to some distance and in that case the rotational movement of wheel is less than the translational movement of the wheel so skid will takes place during braking operation now what do you mean by slip when the rotational movement of wheel is greater than the translational movement of wheel then slip will takes place now during acceleration of the vehicle generally slip will takes place now suppose that you had press the clutch of the vehicle and you are accelerating the vehicle now what will happen the rotational movement of the wheel is continuously goes on increasing slowly and slowly but there will not be any translational movement and you suddenly release the clutch of that vehicle and the slip will takes place so when rotational movement is greater than the translational movement then slip will takes place and it generally happens during the acceleration of the vehicle now the next topic is light reflection generally black road has poor visibility at night but no glare effect at day time whereas white road that is rigid pavement has good visibility at night 
and glare effect at day times. So both roads has its own advantages and disadvantages. It means that the black road that is flexible pavement has poor visibility at night but is having no glare effect at day time. Whereas the rigid pavement that is white road is having good visibility at night but having glare effect at day time. Now if we take the all parameters then overall rigid pavement is better for light reflection point of view. The next topic is unevenness index. It is cumulative vertical undulation that is sudden rise or fall per unit horizontal length of road. It means that suppose that our pavement is like this. That is the pavement. Now the total vertical undulation that is the upward distance as well as the downward distance. Similarly the upward distance as well as the downward distance. So if we add all these values that is sudden rise or sudden fall per unit horizontal length of road then it is known as unevenness index of that road. And it is measured by bump integrator which is developed by CRRI which we had discussed in the Jaker committee recommendations. Now as per Indian Road Congress in this table unevenness index in mm per kilometer is shown in first column and the type of pavement is shown in the second column. Now if unevenness index is less than 1500 mm per kilometer then it is a type of good pavement. If the unevenness index ranges between 1500 to 2500 mm per kilometer then it is a satisfactory type of pavement. If unevenness index ranges between 2500 to 3200 mm per kilometer then it is a bad pavement and if unevenness index is greater than 3200 mm per kilometer then it is a type of uncomfortable pavement. That is all about the cross-sectional elements. Thank you very much student.